Hi there. In this demo, we'll look at some of the new features for no-code provisioning, which is now generally available in Terraform Cloud. No-code provisioning lets you build a self-service workflow for anyone in your organization who needs to provision standardized infrastructure, even if they're not familiar with writing Terraform code. This demo builds on our previous video, which showed the basics of publishing and consuming no-code modules. And today, I'll focus on some new features that came along with this GA release. First, I'm going to create a project for a developer team to use when they need a database instance. Projects let you group together related workspaces, and they also let you scope permissions for more granular team access. So to do that, I'll come to the new menu here in our projects and workspaces view and create a new project. And I'll click on the edit icon to grant team access to our front end team in this case. And I'm gonna grant them the maintain permission, which allows them to create and manage workspaces within this project, but not actually administer the project itself. This is a great benefit for no-code provisioning because we don't need to grant the organization-wide workspace management permissions anymore. Instead, we can limit the scope of these permissions to a project level. Next, I need to set up some provider credentials so that new workspaces can connect to our cloud provider when a new no-code module is provisioned. I'll make use of two new features here. The first is going to be attaching variable sets to projects, and the second one will be dynamic provider credentials, which uses OIDC to authenticate to the cloud provider instead of using static credentials. Now, setting up dynamic provider credentials is outside the scope of this video, but definitely go check out the tutorial we have available at developer.hashicorp.com to see how that works. To set up the variable set, I'll go over here to my organization settings and the variable set screen. And here I have a variable set prepared for this new project that includes everything we need to authenticate to AWS using dynamic provider credentials. I've also included a few default values for some other variables in this RDS module that I'll be publishing. The new feature here is that we can now attach variable sets to projects. So I'll simply select that new dev databases project I just created and save the variable set. Now these variables will be automatically inherited by every current and future workspace in that project. Now I'll publish my new no-code module. Back from the home screen here, go into the private registry, and select Publish Module. Modules are sourced from a supported version control system. In this case, I'll connect to my GitHub account and select this RDS Postgres module that I've prepared. And I will enable it for no-code provisioning. Now that the module has been published into my private registry, I'll go into the no code provisioning settings screen here. And here we see a new feature which lets you add predefined values for any of the required variables in the module. So these would be any variables that don't have default value set in the actual underlying module code. Users need to supply values for these inputs when they provision this module, and this lets the module publisher supply known good values to reduce the chances of provisioning failures that might be caused by typos or invalid values being entered by users. Here I'll set up some defaults for the regions we want our users to work in, and also some expected environment tags so our metadata is consistent. This screen is also where we enable and disable no-code provisioning for any module already existing in the private registry. Now I'm gonna switch over to a member of our development team. Here you can see that my access is limited to just a few projects, including the new dev databases project, which is currently empty. So as an end user, I'm gonna to go to our private registry here and look for no code ready modules that have been prepared for me to use. Here's that RDS Postgres module that was just published. 
And now when we provision a workspace from it, for that environment and region variable, I simply select one of the values that the module publisher has predefined for me. And I'll enter the rest of the inputs that are required. Moving on to the workspace settings, we just need to enter a workspace name and select the project where it will be created. Since the variable set with those dynamic provider credentials has already been attached to the project, it was automatically inherited by this new workspace. And the first one will successfully run through the plan and apply phases without any further user input on my part. And there we go. With just a few clicks, I was able to provision some infrastructure without having to write any Terraform code using the standardized modules that my platform team has made available through the private registry. So to wrap up, we learned how the latest Terraform Cloud features like projects, project level variable sets, dynamic provider credentials, and variable input dropdowns for no-code modules make it even easier to set up a seamless self-service workflow. For more information about no-code provisioning, check out the Terraform Cloud documentation and tutorials at developer.hashicorp.com and head on over to hashicorp.com cloud to get started with a free trial. Thanks for watching.